Welcome to part 5 of this Football Manager 2018 experiment where I gave the top 6 teams in England a transfer embargo for 50 years and in this part 5 I've holidayed until June 2067 it's now the end of that transfer embargo and we're going to have a look to see where all the clubs have ended up after 50 years of not being allowed to make any transfers if you're interested in me making a part 6 where I holiday a few years into the future to see how these 6 teams get on after the embargo then please hit that like button it would be much appreciated as always so here we are in June 2067. I'm going to start with the Premier League to see if any of these six teams have ended up there. I very much doubt it because in the first four parts we saw them slumping all the way down, particularly Spurs and Manchester United more recently, remember. But that is now, I think it's 26 years since the last part. So we've gone a hell of a long way into the future, a whole generation into the future. Uh, a lot of the players that we saw in the last part will be retired now even the young ones. Now there has been one team that has, has actually started to dominate England and that team is Ma uh, Newcastle United. We didn't really see them do anything before. In fact I don't think they'd won a single league title before uh, the end of last the, the last part but they have gone on to dominate and I kind of feel this is a little bit of a shame because we did actually see a lot of competition. I thought, yes, this is great. We've got rid of the top six and we've created this competitive nature between these other teams. To be fair, it was just a new top six, I suppose. But uh, Newcastle have gone on and dominated England quite comfortably, if I'm honest. Look at this. So we ended the last part in 2041. Ipswich had won two titles in a row. Uh, West Ham then won the next one. Ipswich then won four titles in a row. And it looked like Ipswich Town would be the team to dominate England for years to come. But all of a sudden, they they stopped. They haven't won the league since then for 21 years. They have finished second a few times, as you can see. Uh, but Newcastle United suddenly came from... They didn't come from nowhere. They were in the top six quite regularly. But suddenly started to dominate and I think they're basically the best team in Europe now. Five-star reputation, they're, they're obviously rich. And for whatever reason, they are dominating this save. West Ham and Reading have managed to win league titles since Newcastle started to win. But look at that. Out of the last 20 years, they've, they've only lost it twice. And even then, they probably finished second. In fact, third to West Ham. But since really dominating, wow. Reading have done very well as well. They did manage to win their first title and finish second quite a few times. In more recent years, it has been quite competitive, second and third place, but no one seems to be able to catch Newcastle. If I just go back a few years, you can see they generally do win the title by quite a comfortable margin. That's only four points that year ahead of uh, Bournemouth. This was only one point above Fulham, so Fulham are very close to winning the title. They've been a bit unfortunate, but on the whole, they have dominated and you can see that there's none of the traditional old top six in the Premier League. Southend United got to the Premier League by the way as did Barnsley, Brentford, Derby, lots of championship teams in here. Of course Ipswich went up and have been really uh, been really good on this save. Middlesbrough have started to to move into that top six. If we just look at England uh, the top six teams Newcastle, West Ham, Palace, Ipswich, Watford and Fulham at the moment. That has changed a little bit, but we've seen West Ham in there most of the time. Palace, Watford, Ipswich have been in that pretty much for the last 30 or so years as well. But Everton have dropped out of that. They've dropped out of the top six. Fulham have replaced them, I think. And Watford, uh, Newcastle moved in and have completely dominated since. England currently second in the world rankings. The English Premier League is the top competition in Europe, as you can see there. If we just go to finances as well, you can see that the status of these clubs, the turnover for these clubs. New Newcastle, way up there. £144 million. Pounds. Wolves are second. Where's our top six teams then? Where have they gone? Arsenal down in 28th. Man City down in 33rd. We'll have to see where they are, though, in the league tables very soon. I'm just... Just stalling here and looking at England a bit more. But this is the English national team then. And are there any of those traditional top six teams in there? I don't think there are. I might be wrong, but there's a few Watford players. Strangely enough, there's only one Newcastle player. So they obviously aren't relying on English talent. No, they're not. They're a multicultural team here, as you can see. Look at the players they have. Colin Har uh, To be fair, their best player is actually an Englishman. Colin Harper, 31 years old. He must have been one of the best players in the world on this. Looking at his uh, biography, 
What a star. Surely he's won World Golden Ball or something. We'll have to look in a minute, but wow, he's, he started at Barnsley. I've seen, actually, I've seen a couple of players, really good players on this, start at Barnsley. Um, they seem to have a good youth academy on this save. I think they do in real life, but they seem to be producing quite a good good few players. And Colin Harper, what a star he is. Um, they've got good Turkish player, Brazilian, French, but yeah, phenomenal team. Anyway, let's go and see where the other six teams are. This is how the landscape of English football has changed since the top six have been replaced. Let's go down to the championship then and have a look to see who was promoted. So Swansea and Brighton were Burnley going up via the playoffs. Do we have any of the top six teams in here? I don't think we do. So all of the six teams have dropped out of the top two divisions altogether by the year 2067. I don't think there's anyone there. I might have might be blind and not actually seeing properly. But let's go to League One then and see what has happened. Man City have just been promoted from League One. So they are the best team at the end of the 50-year transfer embargo. And they finish second in League One. So they will finish. They will be in the championship with all that money to spend. Because if we go to their finances have a look they've got loads of money they've got a massive transfer budget which they'll be able to spend in the championship and uh, they might even have more by the time july comes around three star reputation team now they're still rich because of all those years in the premier league in fact they spent pretty much the entirety of this experiment in the championship if you look at the last 20 years uh, we saw them they did get promoted back to the premier league briefly but relegated straight away and it was only a couple seasons ago that they were actually relegated to league one so the longevity of man city very, very impressive. Probably the best team on this experiment out of the, the top six. Just, despite the fact they were, I think, the third, second or third team to get relegated from the Premier League. Overall, they've done really, really well. And this is their team in League One. No, this is not their team. This is their team in League One. And they do actually have some good players. This player for League One level is amazing. He's 21 years old, obviously come through. He's not come through their academy. How have they nicked him from Wigan? That, this is the second time I've seen this. A team able to nick a youth academy player despite the embargo. So that's interesting. We haven't seen it that often. So it does seem to be a very rare thing. But occasionally we have seen... Well, this is the second time I've seen a team nick a player from another youth academy without having to buy them, without having to breach the embargo rules. I suppose, like I said in real life, if they're like 14 years old, you do see transfers between teams. It's not necessarily them buying them. It just might be a player deciding to switch to another academy. I remember people at school that used to play for academy switching between a couple. So I guess it does happen. Um, anyway, Rob Bishop is their player and for the future, I think. They probably can hold on to him as well. They're paying him 5k a week. So their wages have certainly gone down uh, since the start of this experiment. Uh, this guy's earning 10.5k a week. He's only 19. So that's quite high, really, for him. They're, oh, and Joe Mitchell, 40k a week. But I guess possibly in the future that might be normal for League One. I, I kind of doubt it. But, you know, they are rich. So I suppose they will be playing big wages to try and get out of League One. And they were a championship team until very recent. Anyway, let's go down the table to see where are the other guys. I don't think they're here. I will have to search for them just to check I haven't missed someone in a minute but only Manchester City were in League One and they were in the championship pretty much until very recently so they've done a lot better than everyone else let's go down League Two then and just Manchester United finished 10th in League Two remember we saw them got relegated to League Two in the last part that was before this point so they were promoted back to League One uh, where they almost went back up to the championship but since then relegated out of League One in 2049, back to League Two, but then relegated straight away, well, two seasons later, to the Vanarama National League. They spent a few years there, promoted back all the way up to League One, and then they've been a yo-yo team between League One and League Two ever since. And not a great season last year, but they will surely be able to buy their way up the divisions quite easily over the next few years, because they've got a hell of a lot of money. Uh, I forgot to look at facilities, by the way, because I think the stadiums have changed, so quickly back go back to Man City in a second but that Manchester United still in Old Trafford they haven't had to move um, let's look at their attendances then first game of League 2 pulling in 20,000 people Carabao Cup 13,000 people halfway 
down here. Twenty. So yeah, about twenty thousand people are going to Old Trafford still in League Two, but that is a hell of a lot of empty seats. And it will, although that's a big attendance for League Two, you know, it will look like an empty stadium because of how big the stadium is. And they did manage to get twenty six thousand people turn up for the Chelsea game, so obviously there's still a bit of reputation between the two teams there. This is the squad. So yeah, this is similar to what we saw Spurs having, I suppose, at, at some point. Um, their best player, Jim Wolf, who is good for this level. He's 16 finishing, 15 combos. He looks like a good striker. Did score 17 goals, in fact. So they've got some decent players, but not good enough to get promoted from League Two. Chelsea finished, or, no, Liverpool, sorry, are next. They finished on 59 points. Have they been relegated up the Football League? Yes, they have, but much more recently than Manchester United. They spent quite a few years in the Championship. They actually did get promoted back to the Premier League since the last part, but relegated straight away, just like Manchester City. Then relegated down to League One, back to the Championship, relegated again, and then down to League Two, then down to the Vanarama National League. They were only promoted last year, so it's only very recently that they've managed to get back into the Football League. But look at this. Trent Alexander, Arnold Park, 46,000-seater stadium. They've left Anfield. They've had to leave Anfield, probably because of, of well, <laughs> going down the divisions. Um, they're a two-star regional team. If we just go to facilities, you can see it was built 12 years ago, 2055. So that's when they were in League One. And they decided they needed to downgrade their stadium. Where am I going? I'm going all over the place. But let's look at their attendances then. So they are getting 26,000 people, which is actually more than Manchester United, to be fair. So they're, they're basically half-filling their new stadium. Whereas Manchester United, a, a, a quarter filling Old Trafford and getting less people than Liverpool, even though I think their reputation was slightly better. Might be wrong, maybe it's about the same. But this is this is interesting. But they did finish all the way down in 16th in the table, which uh, isn't great. I think Man City still have the same stadium, by the way, but I will double check in a minute. Mitchell Diaper, their best player, an Irishman who... Yep, he did come through their academy. We've only seen two players be nicked from other academies. Uh, he looks okay for this level, but to be their best player, they need they need to get better players. And, and I'm sure they will, because likewise, they do have a lot of money to spend next year. Their bank balance isn't particularly good, though. Only 812 grand. But they do have a bit of money to spend. Not a huge amounts. So something's happened to their finances. They've only got okay finances for some reason. What has happened to all their money? You know, they did spend quite a long time in the Premier League and the Championship, but perhaps going down to the Vanarama National League very recently has had an impact, and perhaps building that stadium as well, uh, wasting a lot of money building that stadium. Chelsea are next then, and they now have the Eden Hazard Stadium, 35,000 seater stadium, so they've left uh, Stamford Bridge as well. They did actually expand it towards the start of this experiment, and since then they've I don't know what happened to the, all those massive stadiums that the, all these clubs had, Liverpool and Chelsea. They've obviously uh, been demolished and replaced. But Chelsea, a one-and-a-half-star reputation team, they've spent time in the Vanarama National League South. Look at this. Uh, they were relegated from the Championship a, 20 years ago, and they haven't been in it since 2048, where they were relegated. No, sorry, they haven't been in it since then. Relegated out of League One, back down from the League two to the Vanarama National League for a few years, then relegated to the South, but they have managed to get two successive promotions quite recently, and now they are in League Two. They almost got promoted last year, finishing fourth, as you can see. But not great for Chelsea. Uh, they finish Well, they're I think they're above Arsenal. So Arsenal and Spurs, we haven't seen them. Uh the Eden Hazard Stadium was built in two thousand and fifty four, so around about the same time as Liverpool's and that was when they were in the Vanarama National League. And they built a 35,000-seater stadium. That's fantastic. Uh, oh, I keep clicking on the wrong thing. So they... What's their attendance? We'll ignore the Carabao Cup. Uh, 16,000 people for their first league game of the season. It's Eastleigh. Six, so 16,000 people on the whole. Uh, if we look at Man United, though, they did get 18,000 people turning up. So they are half-filling their stadium as well. Wow. Well, I'm sure they will start to go up these up the divisions, these clubs, with the money that they do have. And they'll start to refill those stadiums gradually, I suppose. 
and then they might have to build a new one again because they uh, don't have enough fans, but uh, don't have enough seats. Sorry, but Chelsea's finances also oh that is very healthy compared to Liverpool. So I'm not sure what's happened to Liverpool. The other clubs are all rich so far, but Liverpool they might have problems. They might get stuck because of their financial situation. I'm just going to quickly go and look at Man City a second and just see if they changed stadium, but I don't think they did. They've still got the City of Manchester Stadium, as you can see there, with a 55,000-seat stadium. Uh, they've got very good um, facilities still because they've been spending the money on their facilities. In fact, I just want to look at Liverpool's facilities. Have they managed to keep up with the rest? Good junior coaching, established youth recruitment, excellent youth facilities, no data an analysis facilities, great training facilities. It's not quite up to the other stand the other team standards, but it's still good. So where are Arsenal and Tottenham then? What has happened to Arsenal? I haven't missed Arsenal, have I? There's a possibility I missed them. No, here's Arsenal. They've just won the Vanarama National League. So they're back in the Football League, finishing quite far ahead of Scunthorpe as you can see there. And one and a half star reputation team. They are rich. Let's look at their finances. Lots of money there, as you can see. They do have the Arsene Wenger Stadium as well. They've left the Emirates. They've basically downgraded to a stadium half the size with 35,000 people. You can see the journey of Arsenal then. So they were re they did get back to the Premier League, but then they were relegated all the way down to League 2 in the space of five years. Back to League 1. Yo-yoed a bit here, as you can see. Then they spent quite a few years progressing in League 1, only for it to for them to then get relegated back down to, to League 2 where they immediately were relegated to the, the Vanarama National League and then immediately relegated to the Vanarama National League South. So three successive relegations. They must have had a torrid time there. Who knows what happened. They just, I guess they didn't have a generation of players coming through the Youth Academy and this decline here started. They, it looked like they were going to get back to the Championship and then I suppose some good players perhaps retired and the the youth players that came through obviously weren't good enough but they got back to the Vanarama National League and they've just managed to win it this is their squad then their best players from New Zealand 79 caps for his country playing at league 2 level though and uh yeah their the best striker Max Adamson 25 goals looks like a good striker for Le for Vanarama National League and probably good enough for league 2 so we'll have to see how they got on in part 6 as to whether they can climb up the divisions. This is their facilities then. So the Arsene Wenger Stadium was built in 2058, which was when they were in League One. Uh, they've got good facilities, as you can see there. They've still got brilliant facilities. And they're... Oh, oh no, is that normal? Their youth stadium at St. Albans. I thought the Arsene Wenger Stadium was at St. Albans there for a second. doesn't actually... Is there a way of finding out where, it, where it's actually based? It just says London, but I don't think it actually says where it is located. Right then, what's their attendances like? Against Fleetwood, they had six, oh, similar to Chelsea, very similar attendances. I guess a lot of fans are now supports, people living in the south, in London and Essex and the surrounding counties, they're now supporting the likes of West Ham and Crystal Palace, good London teams, Fulham as well, they're up there in the top six. So those are the best London teams. All the support is going that way. And Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs, they're missing out. Same with the North West teams as well, I suppose. Um, they've been replaced by other good teams. Although it's more Newcastle in the North East that are getting the really good attendances and lots of fans going there. All the glory hunters now supporting Newcastle, I suppose. Anyway, if we go down, you can see Spurs almost relegated. Uh, they've had the worst time out of any of these teams. And you can see in the entirety of the last 20 years, they have spent it in non-league. They haven't managed to get out of the Football League for a long time. They've got a one-star local reputation. And, yeah, they spent most of it in the regional leagues. They got promoted last year via the playoffs and almost relegated straight away. The Harry Kane Park is now their stadium, but it's pretty small. It's, not, it's good for this level, but compared to the other teams... It is small. If we just go and have a look, it was built. They all built stadiums about the same time in the mid 2050s. So they were in the Vanarama National League South at the time. The, se the season that it that they got promoted was when the Harry Kane Park was finished, and 
they've still got good facilities, very good facilities. Their finances are secure. They should be able to buy their way out of this division and back into the Football League, I think. They've got $8 million to spend, $10 million in the bank balance. So they've got money, but certainly not as much as some of the other teams. But I think they will be able to get back to the Football League quite soon into uh, the next part. Uh, this is their team. They don't have anyone with a over 100 current ability. This is their best player, Lee Colquhoun. Uh, but are they still producing players that are good for the future? They've got one player of 129 potential. And in the under 23s, they've got someone of 116. So that should be good enough to get them up to sort of League 2, League 1 level if they can hang on to those players. Just wanted to have a look at Newcastle's facilities to see if they've built a new stadium. They've still got St. James's Park, but it's been expanded to a 60,000 seater stadium. That's interesting. Um, let's have a quick look at the Premier League stadiums, in fact. So the biggest is the London Stadium. West Ham Stadium has been expanded to 66,000 now. Bobby Robson Arena for Ipswich is at 64,000. The Bet365 is now at 60,000. Some big stadiums here. Crystal Palace's stadium has been expanded once again. Whole City have a new stadium. Lucas Torreira Park, uh, built in 50, uh, 30 years ago, but that's big. Cloudy Renieri Arena, 52,750. When was that built? 2056. So... What, 40 years after he wins the league for Leicester and he's got a stadium named after him because he had, they haven't won the league since. They've obviously done well on this experiment, but not as well as some of the other teams. Reading Stadium, Goodison Park's been expanded. Bournemouth Stadium's massive compared to what they have. That was built ages ago, though, as you can see there. But it's obviously been expanded since. This is ah, oh, this is just intriguing. It really is. The Josh Wright Arena for South End, built... 10 years ago. I don't know who Josh Wright is, but I'm assuming he's a regen who got them promoted to the Premier League or something like that. Oh, St. Mary's Stadium, I think, is the only one that stayed the same. And maybe Pride Park, possibly. River oh, maybe, oh, maybe there's quite a few, actually. But yeah, Brentford Stadium was built in 2048, finally built. And that's uh, pretty big as well. But that's amazing. Let's look at the Cups then. Have Newcastle dominated this competition as well? They've won the most recent one, but they haven't quite dominated this as much as the Premier League. Although they have won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven since 2052. A couple before that as well. Uh, Reading have done particularly well. Crystal Palace, uh, West Ham. Strangely, I mean they've done very well in the league, but they've only won two FA Cups, I think, in this experiment, despite being a dominating force. Fulham, Middlesbrough, Newcastle, the last three winners. It is kind of the teams you'd expect. Looking at the Premier League, it is those the teams basically in the top 10 that are winning the FA Cup. There's no massive shocks here. There's no, maybe Norwich at one point. I think they, were, they weren't doing amazingly at that time when they won the FA Cup. But there's not been any shocks since then. It's all been top 10 teams and all really just top 10 teams featuring in the final, to be honest. So nothing massively shocking there. Let's go down to the Carabao Cup. Similar story, really. Newcastle did dominate for a few years, as you can see there, but they haven't won it since 2059. They're focusing on other things, I suppose. But we've seen West Ham win it twice, Fulham win it twice, Ipswich win it twice, Reading, Wolves, they've both won it. Uh, West Ham very dominant early on, uh, about 25 years ago, I guess, 30 years ago. But once again, it's pretty much the, the Premier League top 10 featuring in this competition. Now, have England dominated the Champions League? Now, we saw Crystal Palace win it in the last part. They were the first team to win it in the experiment, remember? Really impressive achievement from them. Uh, but we have seen Newcastle become the dominating force in Europe alongside other teams like PSG, Atletico Madrid, Bayern Munich, the, the usual faces. But since that last part, so we saw Crystal Palace win it in 2039. The next English team to win it which was a long time, but Reading. Reading won it before Newcastle. And remember, Newcastle by this point were dominating in England, but Reading managed to win the Champions League first, beating PSG in the final in Germany. We then saw Newcastle finally win it in 2055 for the first time, beating West Ham in the final. They've been a bit unlucky there to come, ac come across Newcastle. So Newcastle have won it one, two, three, four, five times in the last 12 years, which is very impressive. Really, really impressive from Newcastle United to be able to dominate to that extent but we've also seen Reading and Crystal Palace win it on this experiment which is just fantastic to see Euro Cup we, we've traditionally seen England dominate this competition and 
it's happened again because Everton managed to win it. Crystal Palace won it three times in four years. They've been very successful in Europe. Not so successful in the Premier League. They've won, I think they've won it once or twice. But really successful in Europe. Ipswich managed to win it. Fulham have reached a couple finals, as you can see there. West Ham won it against Fulham. Fulham then managed to win it against Valencia. Bournemouth have won it. Leicester have reached a final. Wolves have reached a final. Ipswich, Watford. Oh, yeah. Lots of English teams. And the most recent one, Middlesbrough, beat Monaco in the final. And these are the Super Cup winners for those interested. Let's have a look at the World Cup then. Uh, you can see it really was between Brazil and Germany for many years. Brazil, Germany, Brazil, Germany, Brazil, Germany. The pattern was ruined by Germany by winning it twice in a row, as you can see there. But Scotland reached a final. Denmark reached a final. Chile won it in 2054, beating England in the final. England then won it against Spain in 2058. Now, we know England have some very good players and that have been produced not just by the traditional top six. It's been mainly produced by the likes of Barnsley in recent years, actually. And England did reach the most recent final, losing against Brazil. But Germany and Brazil, absolutely dominant on this save. Quite interesting, really. And the Euros, England have won it. Germany, strangely enough, they've only won it once. They haven't dominated this competition. They've focused on World Cups. We've seen Portugal win it twice, Spain win it twice, France win it three times, England win it once, and France win it once. And we saw Poland, shockingly, win the first one as well. Really good achievement for them. How many English players have managed to win the Golden Ball then? Uh, we saw Mick Jeffers win it for West Ham in 2041, but not since then. He didn't manage to win any more, unfortunately. He was produced by Liverpool, remember. So the top six teams were still producing world-class players. Uh, there's an English player finishing third for Newcastle United. And I think that's about it, to be honest. If I just scroll up, there's an Australian managed to win it, which is pretty... Oh, well, there's a Reading player winning, winning it. Peter van der Gaal for Holland. He's now a manager, but he managed to win the World Golden Ball whilst at Reading. That is very impressive. Well done to Reading. For that, that's an achievement and a half. The Newcastle player here, Italian, Rispoli, finished second. And then the Reading player once again finished second. Uh, an Ipswich player, Robert Russo. He's still around at the age of 36. 96 caps for, for his country. And he moved to Real Madrid for £40 million in the end. He started at PSG. Moved around a bit on loan before Ipswich signed him on a free. And he managed to, to finish second place whilst Ipswich. Uh, let's just go up. Why am I not allowed to go up? Here we go. Uh, oh, another Newcastle player, Thomas Alandu, 33 years old, 130 caps for France. Uh, Newcastle signed him from Stoke for £65 million. Uh, he finished second once again in that year. And let's just keep going up. Are there any more English teams? Here we go. Stefan Mayer, a Scottish player managed to win it, by the way. But Stefan Mayer, he's 35 now, uh, plays for Germany. And Ipswich signed him on a free from Schalke. And he was a brilliant player for them for many years, as you can see there. And the new, a Newcastle player, Alandu, finished third once again. And most recently, we didn't see an English player featuring. But I'm sure there's plenty of players in the World Team of the Year. If I just quickly skip back, you can pause it if you're that interested. But I've seen Reading, Newcastle, Crystal Palace players featuring, Ipswich players featuring. Uh, West Ham really haven't been as dominant re recently, have they? They're still apparently the second best team in the country, reputation-wise. But they're not really featuring in these sorts of things quite as much. This is the overall. Where's the overall? This is the overall best eleven ever. Uh, we've got a Newcastle player in there with Orlando, but that's it. So I think we'll end part five there, guys. Thank you for watching this part. Like I said, if you can leave a like on this video just to let me know you're interested in seeing a part six. I'm going to holiday. I think twenty years into the future and see where all the, the transfer embargo clubs are. Have they managed to rise back to the Premier League? Or will maybe a couple of them will and some will get stuck in the lower leagues. Kind of feel a bit worried about Liverpool with those just OK finances. Uh, we'll have to see if they get stuck. I think Man City will get back because remember they've just been promoted to the Championship and Manchester United probably will get back. But will they be able to dislodge Newcastle at the top if they do get back will they be able to break back into that top six which is incredibly strong Newcastle obviously dominating England right now but we've got West Ham, Palace, Ipswich, Watford, Fulham all doing really well as well can they get back into that top six in 20 years time let's ha let's wait and see in part six but until next time enjoy FM 18 and I'll see you very soon